Hello, and welcome to the video number 16 in the series Mastering the NCOSI System Engineering Handbook in preparation for the NCOSI System Engineering Professional Exam. This is video number 16, and it covers the project planning process in Chapter 5.1 of the NCOSI System Engineering Handbook. My name is Lance Sherry, and I will be your tour guide for this chapter. So as we've introduced all the other um, videos in this series, the uh, purpose of the System Engineering Handbook is to document a structured, organized process in order to manage the development of complex systems, shown here on the left as a hierarchy diagram, which are developed in a very complex life cycle, uh, shown in the middle. So together we have complex systems, complex life cycles, and we need a way to manage those processes. The um, System Engineering Handbook very kindly has organized all of these processes into 59 different uh, individual processes and activities. And those 59 processes and activities are categorized into seven groups. This uh, video is related to the project planning process, which is in the technical management processes. So chapter section four has the technical processes, how to design, build, test, and deploy a system. And chapter five, uh, section five is more related to how to manage that process. So these are the technical management processes. And the first one of these is the project planning process. So to put things in context, um, we use the word project to define an activity, a uh, group of people uh, using resources to uh, take a concept all the way through uh, deployment, uh, operation, and uh, retirement. So the, the kind of unit of measure, the unit of control is that of a project. The technical management processes, TMPs, are used to establish and evolve plans for these projects, uh, assess and achieve actual project against the plans in these projects, and then manage and control the execution of the project. So there are eight separate processes that have been defined in the NCOSI System Engineering Handbook, and all of these are to do with establishing a plan to develop a product we call it a project, um, assess the achievement against the plan, and then to manage and control uh, execution of the plan. So remember, the last bullet kind of points out that there is this shared space between the project management and system engineering. Um, the, the project managers have to be good system engineers, and the system engineers have to be good project managers. So the, the reason for that is, is that all of the decisions about the plan uh, for the project have to take into account the system engineering uh, requirements, design, implementation, testing, and so on. And likewise, all of the system engineering activities have to take into account the planning activities. So s system engineers are obliged to manage to a schedule, budget, as well as a product. And that's how these two activities, project management and system engineering, uh, tend to overlap. So the, um, this video is to do with the project planning process. And uh, the learning objectives are as follows. Uh, we want to know what is the purpose of the project planning process. What are the outputs, inputs, and process activities associated with the project planning process? And then uh, the specific knowledge to perform these project planning process is to understand what is a work breakdown structure, uh, what is an integrated product development team, and what uh, is a, a system engineering management plan. Very important, the SEMP, the system engineering management plan. So those are the uh, learning objectives for this uh, video. So let's jump right into the uh, definition according to the NCOSI System Engineering Handbook. The purpose of the project planning process is to produce and coordinate effective and workable plans for development and fielding of the system. 
So we want to develop plans, and these plans have to be workable, they have to be feasible, and uh, we, of course we want to make them as effective if, as possible so that we're not wasting resources, uh, time, or money. In, in plain language, uh, on the bottom in the orange, uh, we want to develop plans so that everyone knows what needs to be done, when they need to do it, and to make sure the project is completed on, um, on budget. Um, so this is kind of an activity where, where uh, you want to come up with something that works for everybody and make sure everyone knows exactly what to do. Um, as, as good system engineers and project uh, um, planners, project managers, we know that there are three things that have to be kind of traded off. Uh, schedule, that's the sequence of activities and the timing, uh, the cost, of course, and then the scope and quality of work. And the reason why that's important is you can always make changes uh, to the schedule by uh, increasing or decreasing the scope. And you can always change the, the cost um, by changing the schedule and or the, the scope and the quality of the work. So those three things, schedule, cost, and quality, uh, all kind of play into each other. So the outputs, inputs, and activities, well, in terms of the outputs, you've got to take all the information that you can related to uh, to the project and, for, and planning for the project. The, um, all of that information is used to kind of come up with the project plan. And then the outputs are primarily a work breakdown structure, WBS, work breakdown structure, a schedule and a budget. And then associated with the schedule and budget is uh, staffing requirements facility and equipment requirements. So all of those things are going to be the outputs of the um, of this uh, process. Um, so there's obviously not enough time in this video to do a complete thorough definition of the project planning process, but um, here's a kind of a, a, sh a short summary um, of the overall process. We start on the left-hand side with a statement of work that includes a preliminary version of all the things that we discussed in the previous section of the INCOSI System Engineering Handbook. In other words, you've got some preliminary business and mission analysis done, stakeholder analysis, and all of that has led to a set of requirements. Uh, you may have done some preliminary design work to understand how those requirements can be fulfilled by technology. And then, of course, you've kind of thought through what it's going to take to build and test the system and finally field it. It would be impossible to have a complete set of all of that information available at this stage, but you've got some preliminary information. So you take that and you merge that with the uh, project deliverables, um, and then that generates a work breakdown structure. And the work breakdown structure establishes all the work that has to be done. Once you have the work, the work breakdown structure, you can create a schedule. And to do that, you have to know what the project milestones are, as well as the uh, project resources available, uh, specifically budget, um, and but also staffing. So that comes up with the schedule. And the schedule is typically in the form of a Gantt chart that shows the sequence of activities that have to be done. Um, if something has to be done before something else can be started, you want to know that and show those relationships on the, on the schedule. So with the schedule, moving to on the upper paths uh, here, we want to uh, create a budget. And of course, um, there's always variance in completing tasks on a schedule. So we'd like to know what the worst case, best case, and anticipated budget would be. Likewise, the schedule also gives us an, a chance to identify the critical path. Those are the uh, time-consuming paths through the schedule, um, which if they don't get done on time, everything else to the right of them gets bumped out. So we want to know what the, the critical path is in our schedule. And then we take the budget and the schedule and we look at that to identify risks. Uh, most of the risks of a project are on the critical path. And when we know what those risks are, we can come up with mitigation plans. Um, so that's how we kind of plan the overall process. 
shown in the dashed box is um, how we assess uh, the progress of, of the project according to the plan. And we'll come to that in this in section 5.2 uh, with uh, the ideas of earned value. So this is a nice summary of the, uh, the overall project planning process to take some preliminary definitions, convert that into a work breakdown structure, convert the work breakdown structure into a schedule, uh, develop the budget, and then using the critical path, come up with the risks and mitigation risks for the project. Um, so a couple terms that we've introduced in the previous section is this uh, work breakdown structure. Um, the work breakdown structure is a, a list of all the activities, all the chunks of work that have to be done. And it's typically organized in a, in a hierarchy. So we kind of group the lowest level work chunks uh, together. Um, the, the, the WBS provides the very highest level framework for planning the project, and that's why it's, uh, it's so important. Um, um, so as you can see, the, the lowest level work chunks can be grouped together in the, by the nature of the kind of work that they've done. And in this case, in the, the uh, construction of a, of a house, um, we kind of grouped all the activities asso associated with steel erection, uh, steel columns, beams, and joists into one group of, um, of, of package. So something else that's very important um, is that the work breakdown structure is best if it's done to identify the work chunks. So many times, um, unfortunately, the work breakdown structure is defined using the components of the system. And that's something different, as shown in the note on the left-hand side. That's known as a product breakdown structure, a PBS, that describes the product uh, components. So to, to best manage the planning of a project, uh, the, the best way to do that is by the work breakdown. And the work breakdown should define the chunks of work that need to be done. Something else that's important uh, with regards to the planning is the integrated product development teams. This is an idea where you get people from all phases of the life cycle and all elements of the, the uh, system to come together um, and to share their perspectives and how things are, can be planned best um, in order to um, uh, maximize the, the execution of the project. Um, so the, the idea here is that you would uh, get people from manufacturing to come in and to uh, think through how the plans are going to be um, established to give them the best opportunity to set up their production lines and to manufacture the, the product in the most efficient manner. Um, the, the same thing is uh, true with regards to uh, the operators and the maintenance people. You'd like to get them involved in the process as early as possible uh, to make sure that the product that's designed and the way that it's uh, developed is uh, consistent and amenable to their uh, responsibilities. All right, um, the last item here is the system engineering management plan. And this is the top level plan for managing the system engineering work on a project. So if you think about you've got this project and you've got these system engineers and they may be located in different locations and responsible for different elements of the project, uh, the mechanical elements, the uh, software elements, the hardware elements. In the case of an airplane, for example, you may have system engineers responsible for the fuselage, some for the landing gear, some for the wings, some for the fuel tanks, and so on. And so we want to make sure that all these system engineers are working in a similar manner towards the same goal. So the system engineering management plan defines the roles and responsibilities of the system engineers and the system engineering teams. It also establishes common system engineering processes and system engineering deliverables. Um, so for example, uh, all system engineers are going to deliver uh, requirements or deliver uh, verification test plans or validation test plans. And on a given project, you'd want all of those to be compatible both in the format, but more importantly, in the, in the content and the quality of, of, the, of, of the deliverables. 
So the system engineering management plan is the way to kind of organize that, assign the roles and responsibilities to the system engineering teams, uh, agree on the system engineering processes, and agree on the system engineering deliverables. So there are typically three sections to a SEMP. Uh, the first section is the technical project planning and control. Uh, the second section is the engineering process. And then the third section is the engineering specialty integration. Um, so obviously a very complicated topic and more than we can cover um, on this in this video. But the, the technical project planning and control, it, it kind of details um, the project and how it will be managed. So roles and responsibilities, the fact that there's a schedule and a project plan, and so on. Um, very, very important in the technical project planning process is this idea of configuration control and version release, and then this idea of issue management and decision making. And those are typically managed by the Configuration Control Board. So this is a group of system engineers who are going to come together and resolve the very hard uh, issues that are creating tension uh, as the project is, is developed. Um, one of the responsibilities of the Configuration uh, Control Board is when the product is in late stages of testing and problems are reported, um, the Configuration Control Board is going to have to prioritize the, uh, those problems uh, for evaluation and then decide which ones will get fixed uh, for each version of the release and uh, which ones would get pushed off with a, uh, a limitation uh, for use. So it's, it's not always possible to uh, have zero problem reports when the, when the project is completed. And so you'll have to fix the ones that are absolutely critical. Um, and then some of them you may uh, put off until a later release uh, because you can just uh, avoid using the product in that particular rare circumstance, or you can uh, put a limitation on the procedures to avoid using a specific function. So configuration control board is where the rubber meets the road, where all of the difficult decisions especially close to the end of the project uh, um, uh, development phase when the project's about to be deployed are resolved. The second section is system engineering processes and that's the processes that are used to, to guide all the activities in the uh, life cycle, CONOPS requirements, verification testing and so on. And then the third section is the specialty integration, uh, engineering specialty integration. And that's how you're going to make sure that the safety analysis, um, uh, human engineering, quality assurance is all embedded in the uh, design of the system. So now that we've completed um, this uh, video, this is a good time for you to pause the video, grab a pencil and paper, and see if you can answer uh, these quiz questions. When you're done answering them, you can unpause the video and go on to the next slide. Here are the answers uh, to the questions. Uh, how well did you do? So finally, thank you so much for uh, listening to the video, watching the video. Um, this was the project planning process and the next video in the series is the project assessment and control process.